Hello, and welcome to another video in my Fundamentals of Orchestration series. I'm very excited for this video on the orchestral concert harp, as I recently reached my very first Patreon goal. Having reached that first goal, I was able to purchase the Berlin Symphonic Harps sample library, which made this video possible. So thank you to all of my patrons for your support. In this video, I'll discuss the construction, performance techniques, timbral qualities, and notation of the concert harp. My next video after this one will be an episode in the Piano to Orchestra series, and it will feature the harp as an orchestral instrument. The concert harp, also known as the pedal harp, is a large plucked string instrument, roughly six feet tall and about 80 pounds in weight. The word harp is the general term for any string instrument plucked with fingers. That includes instruments from all around the world and as far back in history as ancient Greece. The modern concert harp is the specific harp used in most Western classical orchestras or ensembles. It was first used primarily as a solo or chamber instrument in the Baroque and early classical period by composers like Handel and Mozart. Composers like Berlioz and Liszt began to incorporate the harp in orchestral works during the mid-19th century, and by the turn of the century, the harp had become a regular member of the orchestra. There are a total of 47 strings on the modern harp, the lowest strings are constructed from steel wrapped in copper, and the mid and upper strings are typically made from nylon. The 47 strings span roughly 6.5 octaves, and each octave contains just 7 strings. 1 C, 1 D, 1 E, 1 F, 1 G, 1 A, and 1 B string. So to play flats or sharps, there are 7 foot pedals, one for each note name. In other words, there's one pedal that controls all of the C strings, one pedal that controls all of the D strings, and so on. Each pedal then has three different positions, and these aren't like piano pedals that have to be continually pressed down. Once raised or lowered, they stay in place. In the middle position, each string of the same note name is natural. For example, with the C pedal in the middle position, every single C string will sound like C natural. With the pedal raised, each corresponding string will be chromatically lowered. For example, with the C pedal raised, all the C strings will sound C flat. And with the pedal lowered, every corresponding string will be chromatically raised. So with the C pedal lowered, all of the strings will sound C sharp. If you're unfamiliar with harp notation or the mechanics of the harp, this business with pedals might seem a bit confusing. I'll take a closer look now at how to fully understand the harp tuning system and what it means for composing or orchestrating for the instrument. Let's say that I have the harpist play a simple two octave C major ascending scale. On harp, this is extremely simple to do. You set the correct pedaling and then play all the strings starting at C3 up to C5. It's the equivalent to playing all of the white notes in ascending order on the piano. Because of the pedaling system, each string is in the natural position, so there are no sharps or flats. The correct harp pedaling for this example is shown here in the form of a pedal diagram. Notating pedal diagrams in the score can be useful for both composers and harpists, as the composer can keep track of which pitches are currently available, and the harpist can more easily set the pedaling before a phrase or piece of music. This diagram shows the seven pedals with three on the left and four on the right. The placement of the seven vertical lines shows the position of the pedals. In this particular example, each marking is positioned in the middle because there are no sharps or flats in the music. However, if I wanted, let's say, an E-flat major scale, the harpist would set the pedal into this configuration with the B, E, and A strings in the upper pedal position, which lowers the pitch by a semitone. An important thing to remember is that the pedal position adjusts every single string of the same pitch class. For example, when the harpist adjusts the B pedal to have B flat, as shown here, all of the B strings in every octave of the harp now sound like B flat. If I wanted the second B to be pitched back up to B natural, the harpist would need to make an additional pedal change at some point after playing the B flat, and before this B natural. Sometimes, instead of pedal diagrams, you'll see just the pitches with accidentals indicated, like this. Single pedal changes, like this one, need only show the pitch changed, not all seven pitches. 
I've placed this pedal change on beat 3 of the measure, which is 3 16th notes before the actual new note. I'm not sure if the exact position of this pedal change indication matters, but I think it's best to place it on a downbeat if possible. The harpist can make a pedal change fairly immediately, but keep in mind that only two pedal changes can be made at a time, one with each foot on its respective side of the harp. Another significant consequence of harp pedaling is in the limitations of chord or glissando writing. Take these chords for instance. The first one is an E major triad. The pedaling might look something like this, with the G sharp being the only accidental. Now look at this second chord. The chord is unplayable because there's both a G natural and a G sharp present. All of the G strings have to be either sharp or natural. There can't be some sharp and some natural. So the way to get around this is by using enharmonic spellings. I can keep the G strings all natural and spell the G sharp as an A flat, since the A strings aren't currently being used in this chord. Using enharmonic spellings won't always work, and it's just one of the limitations of the harp that you have to be aware of. Because of the way enharmonic spellings work, you can actually have multiple strings sound as the same pitch. This can be useful, especially when writing glissando passages. For example, let's say I want to have a dominant 7 sonority in a glissando texture. How about in E major again? This notation shown here would be extremely unidiomatic and not at all practical. The harpist would have to basically play every other string within this range. Even at slow tempos, this is poor writing. Here's an effective solution. The F flat will sound the same as E natural, the A flat sounds equivalent to G sharp, and the C flat is the same as B natural. So essentially you're doubling the root third and fifth of the chord, but by doing so, the harpist can more effectively play a glissando without having to skip over any strings. The 47 strings of the harp range from C1 to G7, and because of the large range, there are some noticeable timbral and dynamic differences throughout its range. In general, the lower the note, the weaker the dynamic or volume level, but the more resonant it is. The lowest harp strings, specifically those below the bass clef staff, are naturally very quiet in comparison to notes within the bass or treble clef staff. Because of the longer decay time and lower frequency, there is a tendency for notes below the staff to be muddier if left to resonate naturally. The harpist can dampen a string to stop its resonance. The majority of harp writing, whether it be arpeggios, glissandi, or chords, will occur within the bass or treble clef staves. It's the most effective register for orchestral harp writing with a warm and rich timbre, and a 1 to 2 second decay time on each note. Notes above the treble clef staff are naturally more piercing, and have a more percussive timbre with very little resonance. This register is effective at penetrating through an orchestral texture, however it lacks the warmth and resonance of the rest of the instrument. Like piano, the harp is played with both hands, because of the positioning of the instrument in relation to the player, however, the left and right hands have slightly different playable ranges. Normally this isn't something the composer needs to be concerned with, however there may be times, for instance, when the range of a right-handed glissando is limited, or perhaps a low chord such as this one here would be difficult or impossible, because the right hand would be unable to reach the low E of the upper staff. That brings up another important point. Only four fingers are used on each hand to play notes, so five note chords in a single hand are impossible to play. Here are a few tips when writing chords. The first rule is that you shouldn't write a chord with a total range larger than an eleventh. This is slightly larger than the suggested range for writing piano chords. And another important thing to consider, in four note chords it's best to have the lowest two notes of the chord no larger than a fifth apart and in three note chords no larger than an octave apart. Unless notated otherwise, chords will be slightly arpeggiated. So for example, this written chord will sound like this. If you instead want an unarpeggiated chord, you should indicate using a bracket. And if you want a more exaggerated arpeggio, you can indicate it using a normal arpeggio symbol for an ascending arpeggio. 
and the same symbol with the down arrow for a descending arpeggio. Besides the ordinary plucked technique, there are several performance techniques worth mentioning that produce unique timbres and effects. Like other string instruments, the harp is capable of producing harmonics for a slightly more hollow, bell-like timbre. Harmonics are produced by stopping the node, which is halfway up the string's length, with the palm or side of hand, and then plucking the string with a finger on the same hand. By far the most common harp harmonic sounds in octave above written pitch, and is indicated with a circle above the note. The practical written range for playing harmonics is from the bottom of the bass clef staff to the top of the treble clef staff. Harmonics producing pitches other than an octave above are possible, but very difficult and much less practical. Because of the special hand position required, there are limitations when it comes to writing chords using harmonics. The right hand can only play one harmonic at a time, and the left hand can play up to three harmonics at a time, with a maximum total size of about a fifth or sixth. Another very common technique is glissando, which I've already mentioned a few times. The important thing to remember is that every single string is used, so the pedaling must be set for the scale or tuning that fits the music. This is fairly straightforward for major and minor scales, but it may require some thinking for other scales. For instance, if you want a diminished 7 sonority, you have to decide whether to use just the four notes of the diminished 7 tetrachord, like this, where the pedaling creates a doubling of chord tones. Or perhaps instead you could find a 7 note scale that fits the diminished 7 sonority, like this one for instance. There are several ways to notate glissandi, and most harpists would probably say that the exact rhythmic timing doesn't need to be notated. In fact, with the pedals set, you could easily notate this glissandi several different ways. The first two on the left would probably result in a very similar sounding glissando, and the one on the right gives the harpist a bit more freedom to ad-lib in terms of use of both hands, range, and direction. Unless you know exactly where you want a glissando to start and how it should sound, I recommend notating glissandi something closer to what's shown on the right. Glissandi can be performed in either hand or in both hands together. The example on the left shows an F major scale glissando where both hands are moving in parallel motion. The example on the right is a whole tone scale where the hands move in contrasting motion. Another very standard harp performance technique is staccato, where the strings are plucked then immediately dampened to stop the resonance. Because of the need to dampen the strings, you should be cautious not to write too demanding of a part with staccatos. Here's an example of a staccato harp passage. Another common harp technique is bisbigliando, which means murmuring and it's sort of equivalent to a tremolo chord. Any three to eight note chord can be performed using bisbigliando technique, and the results are this fluttering, murmuring timbre that is very effective in soft dynamics. And the last technique that I'll mention today is known as pre de la table, which is abbreviated to PDLT in the notation. This technique is performed by plucking the strings near the soundboard, producing a guitar-like sound. The playable range for this technique is effective below the top of the treble clef staff. Chords are possible with this technique and should be limited to an octave in interval size. Here's an example of this technique. There are several other techniques including extended techniques and ways of producing interesting percussive sounds or special effects but I won't go into detail on them today. In my next Piano to Orchestra video, I'll be focusing on adding the harp to orchestral textures. So thanks for watching and see you next time.